Hey, Tom here, Flip Anything USA. Uh, so today is Friday. It's Fake Guru Friday. Uh, I've been very busy. I just picked up another house uh, about to close here next week. Uh, that one I'm actually excited to find another good deal here so quickly after another. Uh, so it's uh, Fake Guru Friday uh, where we uh, review fake gurus or people that aren't fake too sometimes. <laughs> I don't even know how to define it. Uh, I'm a real estate investor, so I'm used to just kind of dealing with facts and not being vague. Uh, too many uh, of these uh, guys get out there, and I'm talking about Chris Crone. I'm talking about Pace Morby. I'm talking about Grant Cardone. Very, very uh, vague and light on details, which is uh, confusing to people. You know, it's like, uh, I understand you don't want to give away the secrets. I mean, I, I have a, a mentorship myself, but uh, I mean, I mentor, I mentor people. Uh, but I'm more very different in as much as I'm very specific in showing properties and profits and in, 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 in my, when I talk about my uh, mentees or my students, very specific about the amounts of money they've made. In fact, I got one of my students here very proud. Uh, Jerry looks like he made equity uh, at least two million dollars on his last deal. That's a big, big deal. That's a really that's a life changer. You know, that's something he'll be able to live on for a very long time. So, uh, those of you that are new here, I have a book, uh, "Wake Up and Smell the Real Estate." It's been very popular. Been a bestseller on Amazon, Audible, and Kindle. It's what uh, spurred me to do the mentorship. So many people requested that I do one, so I did. Uh, had tremendous success in that as well. Uh, urge you to take a look at that. Also, by the way. Go to flipanythingusa.com, uh, and you can uh, you can see for yourself. Uh, this is the website here, and you'll see that I have uh, testimonials, real people uh, making uh, real profits. This gentleman here has made done very well, and, and lots of others as well. Uh, but be sure to check that out, Flip Anything USA. So let's get back to uh, uh, the video that we're going to watch. And uh, in fact, I was going to kind of leave it up to you guys. I don't even know who you want to watch necessarily. Uh, but we can, uh, I've got Chris Crone here. Uh, let's see, let me show you what I got here. I've got Pace Morby talking about some stuff. Uh, so Pace Morby here, this is private money lenders. How do you find them? Assigning sub two deals. Uh, and uh, we got another one here. Uh, he's talking to Kevin Cho. Uh, you know, and nobody knows uh, people <laughs> talk about Kevin Cho. Uh, this is, uh, I've, Heard him say he's made a, a couple hundred grand uh, or five grand, uh, but he's going to make uh, four, five hundred thousand. Uh, I've never really seen any basis for it. Uh, it's very interesting when somebody says, "Yeah, I made five grand," or or in this other video he says uh, he's splitting, I think ninety thousand with I don't know how many people, maybe thirteen people. I'm not even sure how many. But the the bottom line is, it's uh, you want some sort of way to quantify the numbers when somebody says that. Uh, in fact, it's a little bit disturbing, and I'll get into that a little bit later here uh, about how if somebody came into a video late, you would think that Pace Morby just said this guy made five hundred thousand dollars, but if you came in ten seconds earlier. You'd, you would have heard the guy say, I expect to make 500000 a year. Then Pace says, imagine that, or something like that. He's going to make $500,000 this year, or making 500000 a year, as if it's already happened. Uh, the, the problem with that is the people that are selling the Morby course, uh, I've seen, I've talked to some, uh, are, are saying that these young people have made hundreds of thousands of dollars. Uh, but I'm like, where's the evidence of that? And, uh, and when I ask them, uh, they don't seem to know either, to be quite honest. Uh, so anyways, let's take, uh, let's take a look uh, at uh, some of this stuff. And uh, we've got to start with the fake guru jingle, first of all. And listen, time is on a mission to eliminate all the snake oil and the fake gurus that fake y'all. And he'll show you how to build an empire, starting with nothing but a desire. All you really need is a good mentor, not a used car, bullshit. With time, you'll learn to crush it. Investing like Warren Buffett. With real estate, you cannot procrastinate. Everyone who hesitates is left at the starting gate. Hey, yo, so don't delay and join today. The mentorship and flip anything you USA. Go. It's the best thing I ever did. Woo! All right. 
so anyways, let's, uh, so you guys tell me, hey, hey, Gemini, how you doing, buddy? Uh, what, what do you guys want to watch? Want to watch Chris Crone? Uh, you know, uh, Chris Crone, man, that's, it's hard to watch Chris Crone, to be quite honest. Uh, but, uh, you know, hey, we can do it. I, 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 the similarities between Chris Crone and Pee Wee Herman are absolutely pretty amazing. They both got, like, Chris Crone's Playhouse, Pee Wee's Playhouse, uh, you know, Chris Crone, of course, jumps around all over his studio uh, and basically just refers and qu- quotes articles. Uh, no substance uh, to me, no substance whatsoever. I, and it's so always go to the links below and then get on the email list and then, you know, do you have equity in your home? That's kind of the routine there. Uh, you know, and maybe we'll even go to the whiteboard here. What do you guys want to do? You want to talk about, you want to talk about some of the, uh, you know, the, the, the prob- problems with the, the vague, you know, the, the vague stuff or uh, give me some feedback here. But um, uh, anyways, let, let's just start. Let's, let's just start with Chris Crone here and then we can jump around a little bit. So this is uh, Chris Crone, why you need to invest. I have not watched this, uh, but let's take a look. You know, people ask me, Chris, why do I need to invest my money? So like he's, he's chopping up cash, right? Let me move my head out of the way. Oh, just go over here. Like I said, I, I, I feel like he, he's already treating the audience as if they're juveniles, right? I mean, this is a grown man supposedly talking to grown people. He's trying to get people to invest the money out of the equity of their home. But this kind of a, a video, I feel like it's for eight-year-olds. But keep, let's keep watching. Chris Crone... Uh, why you need to invest. I'm like, well, for starters, inflation is eating it alive. I mean, with 62% of Americans living check to check, you take the little you got, you put it in the bank, and it's literally just like whittling it down into nothing. It's one of the dumbest things people do. But today I'm gonna share with you two of my favorite investments, what I think you should be doing with your money, especially right now. I think I already know where that's going. (laughs) Okay, uh, look, okay, also, also, this is, let's say what, uh, uh, this guy is one of the most self-ingratiating, uh, uh, I think I'm using that word correctly, uh, or ag- uh, uh, aggradizing, or uh, uh, aggrandizing, uh, a self- self-adi- self-aggrandizing uh, person, I'm not sure I murdered the word to a degree, but, but watch his little piece, this is what his, his routine is, the Superman, this is what they call the Superman entrance, by the way. Today we are going to have the conversation on why you need to invest. And it should be pretty obvious. Right now inflation is eroding all money that you have in a 401k, an IRA, your savings account, the stock market. Bottom line, if you have soft assets that is not invested, it is being eaten alive. Check it out. This is $10,000. This is basically 100 Benjamins. And you know what? This is the average amount of money in the U.S. person's bank account right now. By the way, why do I actually don't think people have that much money. I doubt people have an average wealth of, of 10 grand. It's far less. People live in check to check. It's pretty horrible. We have $10,000 sitting in there anyway. Check this out. A dollar in 1983. Rewind the clock. Uh, okay, see, this is typical Chris Crone. He just goes to articles about money, about financials, which, which really has nothing to do with whether or not he knows what he's doing or whether he can be of any service to you. He, he's simply just trying to make the case that, yeah, inflation, right? Uh, you know, it, uh, look... I started in 1981 with my first investment when I was 19 years old. Uh, Gas prices at the time were high at the time, not high compared to now. Uh, But uh, the the unemployment was high. I was in an area where there's, uh, you know, aircraft. They canceled some of the contracts for aircraft. I had parents that worked in aircraft. Uh, And, you know, there's uh, those kinds of things can dominate a, a particular area. That's why I'm one of these guys that, I don't worry about the whole USA. I'm affected by interest rates, right? Interest rates go up, sure, I'm affected. Uh, but really what I'm affected by is how healthy is the area in my immediate area. In my immediate area, how are things going? 
And that's the area that you should most be concerned with is the area in which you live uh, because you know it well. That's why I prosper so well. Okay, let me give you an example because I like to be specific. Uh, and, and I'll probably uh, come to this again sometime. Uh, let me see here. So look, th this is every one of those blue dots you see here. Those are, those are properties that, that I own or I have owned. Okay, which and when I just now got these things pinpointed in the Google Maps, but I have apartment buildings, I have uh, commercial st you know stores, retail centers, I've got uh, uh, industrial buildings, anything you want, I could point you to and show you here, and so. This is one of the reasons I always point out that I'm a very relevant mentor, and this is why my students have done so well. And I, I invite you to compare uh, my record to Grant Cardone, Chris Crone, Pace Morby, anybody out there you've ever heard of. I, I have a, a, a stellar record and, and a, a history of 42 years of buying and selling real estate and doing very well with it. But also I have my students, more importantly, uh, are, are also doing extremely well. And they're very specific about the money they make. It's no, there's no guesstimate. How do you guess you're going to make? You know, it's very specific. So uh, anyways, so I, I, I laugh because, uh, so let's, let's get back to, we'll get back here to uh, Chris Crow and let him go on a little bit. But I'll probably jump through some of this. Uh, yeah, Chris can be funny. It's now worth three dollars and eight cents today. The dollar had an average inflation rate of two point eight five percent per year between nineteen eighty three and today. By the way, the last couple of years it's been like four, five, six percent. Let's jump in. But real estate has gone up by almost eight hundred percent. Notice that this is four times higher than this. What that essentially means is that literally, when you buy a home and compare it to a dollar. This performs four times better over time. Okay, yeah, this talking to people like they're kids. I'm just telling you, I, I, I say this. If somebody watches three or four minutes of a Chris Crone video, if they're still watching it after three or four minutes, I, I think they have, you know, they, it's kind of like that's the target. Anybody that would watch this stuff for that amount of time, uh, I just think that they're lacking a little bit. Uh, in fact, his, his, uh, his, you know, his playhouse where he jumps around, uh, it makes, you know, a lot of silly stuff. And, of course, he's going to quote articles and look at articles and different things. Let's jump here and see where he's going with this. This is interesting. Maybe he's changing gears. Let's look at this. There's the government that will actually put up money for getting in, so you don't need that much. Only 7% of franchise owners, however, earn more than a quarter million dollars a year, and 51% earn less than 50000 Okay, so I guess he's make, making the comp... comp it's comparing it to being in a franchise business. Uh, anyways, uh, I, I, the, the whole idea of not getting to the damn point, that's what I like. I like specifics. Talk about your methods. Talk about what you're, you're doing. I mean, talk about, you know, you're going to, you know, look, I paced Morby the other day. I was looking at something, and he says, because uh, uh, you can make a nice chunk of change. You can make a nice chunk of change. And what does that mean to you? If you were in an investment meeting and somebody said that, you'd be laughing them out the door. It'd be like, specifically, you know, how much money did this guy? He made a nice chunk of change. He did 53 deals. What does that mean? Did he make bad deals? Did he make a dollar a deal? Did he, make, did he lose money? To say deals is too ambiguous. And, and, and right now, uh, you know, you'll notice a lot of these guys will change gears. I mean, they'd be selling cars the next day if, if they thought it was profitable. Uh, are more profitable than what they're doing. So let, let's keep watching a little bit. Maybe I'm one of the 50% and I'm only making $50,000 a year, but if it's not taking any of my time, how is that a bad thing? Building a business can be scary and success rates can be low. Okay. Okay. This is about why you need to invest. So I'll, I'll sum it up here a little bit for you guys. I, I, I'm just going to go to whiteboard. Uh, I find this stuff kind of maddening anyways. Uh, and I'm going to be more specific to you and talk about investing. So I'm going to jump to uh, a whiteboard I have lit up here. Oh, or do I? Let's see. Uh, all right. So I'm going to go to the whiteboard. If I can find the whiteboard here on my deal. Here it is. Uh, okay, we've got the whiteboard small. And here we got the large whiteboard right here. All right. So let me go over there. Let's 
so it, there, he, I'll say this for Chris. It, it is important that you invest. And, and so a lot of people say, like, for example, uh, if you invest in a, a fund or a partnership, uh, and this is what, what a lot of people do, is they'll, they'll borrow, say, uh, 25%. Uh, uh, of the equity out of their home, right? So let's just say you borrow 25% of the equity out of your home, and uh, that's 50K. So let's just say 50K. Now you send that over, and you invest that, so you can see that. and you invest that, make sure you guys can see this, uh, in a fund. Okay, now, a lot of these funds, or a lot of these proposals that people make, they, they'll, they're not supposed to promise or suggest that they're going to make an exorbitant amount of money, or more than they have in the past. It's okay to say, you can make a million dollars, but it's, it's more qualified if you actually have made a million dollars doing what you say you do. So when people say, you can make millions or you can make hundreds of thousands, and I do say that, but I also qualify it, and I show it how I've made a million dollars on a single deal or, or you know, hundreds of thousands or whatever it is. Uh, it, it, so that's important is looking for the credibility and making sure that people are showing you that they've done it. Now, somebody put me on a Chris Crone uh, mailing list, uh, and all of a sudden I started getting bombarded by emails, and... And he jumped around to some different things, you know, different things he was selling. But primarily, it seemed like the interest was that he wanted to know if I had equity in my home and if I could invest that uh, it with him. Now, I don't know the specifics on his deal, but what I've seen with a lot of these is, is people, uh, they take 50% out of their home, and maybe they pay 5% interest, okay, on this 50, on 50K, $50,000, right? Uh, so they're paying 5% on $50,000. Uh, they throw that in and buy an investment. It could be with Chris or it could be with somebody else. Uh, you know, Grant Cardone, I had somebody on there that put two hundred grand in with Grant Cardone, and I, I believe he said he was getting an average of uh, 4%, which is not an unusual amount for a person to get. It's not a, it's not a fantastic amount. But see, when you got Grant Cardone saying this is the best asset class in the world, you know, it is how good of a deal is it for you if you're pulling fifty thousand out of your house and you got to pay for it, right? Because it's you know you're you're drawing the equity out, so you're borrowing it. You're basically borrowing it from the bank. So you're getting a five percent interest on your fifty k, and then you're throwing it into an investment, like in this case, the one that I'm talking about with Grant Cardone. Uh, and you're getting an average return of 4%. That means you're losing 1% on your investment. Now, you may get some uh, depreciation. You may get some, some little bit of you know, perks like that. But again, it's, it's so tiny. It's so nothing that, uh, to me, it just doesn't make any sense. Uh, now, this also could be you know, uh, going in on a house with someone you know, like Chris. See, Chris doesn't go into the details, uh, so it's hard to know. Uh, and so uh, that's the main thing. So, you know, it's simple if you know that when you go in on a deal with somebody, well, what are they putting in? You know what I mean? To simply go out and buy a house retail with somebody else's money, uh, A, that's not hard to do. Anybody can do that. You give me money, I go buy a house, your money, I buy the down payment, use it for the down payment. Uh, we rent the property, it pencils, it covers itself. I get half of the benefits of that ownership and I get zero in, in, in you know, sweat in the game. That would be a very good deal for me. Now, for you, you're getting half of the, if you would be getting, you're making half, even though you're putting up all the money it took to leverage to buy the property. And, and I'm not saying this is what Chris does. Uh, that's my understanding. That's kind of what he does. But again, I don't know for sure. Uh, he needs to really spell it out. But that's the kind of stuff, like I say, People pull the equity out of their home 
to go into another asset that makes less than what they're paying the bank for the same amount of money. It, it, it doesn't make any sense. All right. Hey, Liam. How you doing, bud? Glad to see you in here. Uh, which, by the way, we're going to uh, mentor the people that are in the mentorship in here. Tomorrow, it's just going to be a short class. Probably only be like uh, two hours tomorrow. Uh, and welcome new members, by the way. Uh, glad to have you aboard. Uh, anyways, uh, Liam's actually somebody who's been in the class that's done very well. Uh, and uh, yeah, anyways, you know, what, what else? Does anybody, I feel like nobody's even, uh, it's Friday. It's, I, I think I should be doing Fake Guru Thursdays. It seems like everybody's on their way out the door at the, hitting the bar, which I don't, uh, you know, disagree with doing with sometimes myself. Uh, but uh, a, a lot of exciting stuff going on. Uh, uh, students in the class, uh, we've had at least one, two, uh, five purchases this month. Uh, and every one of them, uh, you know, according to the students, uh, are going to be very profitable. And some I've seen for myself actually uh, almost looks like he's going to make a good, well, I won't say his name, uh, is going to make a, a, a nice, I'm not going to say a nice chunk of change. I <laughs> can't say it. Uh, but uh, uh, he's going to do quite well. Uh, anyways, so look, let's, yeah, I'll tell you what, let's watch a little bit more Chris Crone here. And then uh, we'll see where it goes. Oh, this is a place I really like I can put money is in the game of real estate. You know why? Remember earlier when I said, oh, no, over the last 40 years, this amount of money lost two thirds of its value. Guess what it does in real estate? The opposite. This amount of money becomes like this amount of money. Bad. So let's see if he gets specific, right? It's always vague, vague right? I show you, when I show you stuff, I'm very specific. I show you how much money I made, or, or I talk about a student, I say, this is how much money they made. Let's see if he talks in specifics. He's saying, yeah, you invest, you can invest in real estate. Yeah, everybody loves to invest in real estate. Good. Cash not good. Real estate really awesome. Real estate provides cash flow appreciation. It can definitely be used to leverage into additional investments. You got tax benefits. Like, of the entire U.S. tax code, you realize that the so actually, this is interesting, and I'm, I'm glad to see this here. If you were to buy a home at 300000 it would be worth 382000 in just five years at, with a 5% appreciation rate, right? Okay. So, I mean, this is why we love real estate, is, is that, uh, you know, and, and this is why I love to borrow money as cheaply as I possibly can uh, to make that, you know, to make money on the borrowed money. Now, this three hundred thousand. Uh, again, if you're getting five percent on three hundred thousand dollars, that's that's on three hundred thousand. But if it's five hundred, uh, if it's three hundred thousand borrowed dollars, and you've only got twenty five percent of your money down into it, uh, you're getting the benefit. Uh, of the five percent going on it, but you're also at, you know, at this time you're paying five to seven percent for the borrowed money. So again, it kind of you got to be really careful because uh, it it cancels it cancels things out very quickly. Uh, it, the the borrowed money is very very important. You know, I, I I can give you a really good example. I I paid uh, and this is a, a recent investment too. I bought maybe three years ago. I bought a a building for a million six. And I paid cash for it because I because I could paid cash for it and it had a nine and a quarter percent return. That's great, right? Well, then I borrowed one point two million against that asset at four percent. So now the money that I'm making on the building, as opposed to what I'm borrowing three quarters of the money for, I'm making five and a quarter percent on one point two million of borrowed money because I put that one, even after I, in other words, I was getting nine and a quarter percent on my whole, you know, 1.6 million, but then I borrowed 1.2 million against it. So I took a, a loan from the bank. I'm paying them 4% uh, on 1.2 million, but I'm still making five point five and a quarter percent uh, the difference on that 1.2 million. So the difference to me was, 
it was costing me, and I may be off here on a, a fractionally, but but the bottom line is I was making one hundred and forty four thousand dollars a year on my one point six million. But when I pulled the one point two million out and borrowed it from the bank and paid them, I think the interest I was paying them was forty four thousand a year. Uh, so uh, now I'm still making. I was forty five thousand a year. So I'm I was still making ninety nine thousand dollars a year on that total investment. And I only had 400,000 in it. So think about that. I'm making $99,000 a year on my $400,000. Because it, you know, in, in other words, it's the 400 that allowed me to borrow that 1.2 to get the building. And so now if you do the math on that, I'm making 24.8% interest on my $400,000. That is a significant return. And, and that's what, you, you know, people watching, I, I want you to raise your standards for making money. If you set your standards low, you'll hit them and all your money will be gone. And that's how it works. You set your standards low, boom, you hit it and now your money's gone. And it's chugging away, making that tiny little bit of money. That's what you got to be careful with. Uh, again, you know, you can uh, talk to Chris Crone directly on his stuff. I don't know exactly what he offers. I just know that uh, he kind of talks around uh, the stuff that I think people would like to know, but let's keep watching. Number one tax benefit period is for landowners. Like this is an ancient idea. Like we want to own land and like, so you own real estate today and you're literally the best off. Like, for example, if you were to buy a house at $300,000 and just wait five years, it goes up to $382,000. By the way, my predictions are much steeper than that. Bro, I do not have the time to go transact this real estate, inspect homes, or do real estate as a business. I got a family, I got a career. And that's why there's an option for you to actually partner with me. You see, I've got a host of real estate and a host of franchises. And one of the ways that I create value in the world is really simple. You've worked your buns off, you got some dough, and guess what? I got a team of experts that know how to grow it. If we come together and partner, imagine if we split the profits. Yeah, again, there we go. So you're the money. He's the brains, presumably. Uh, but, uh, you know, wouldn't you like to see a testimony here? Somebody say, yeah, I threw in, you know, whatever, 200 grand with Chris, and this is what I got. This is my return. Uh, I, I think that would be valuable. If you want to know what that's like, if you want to meet some of the people that have made millions of dollars with me, if you want to learn about my track record on over $2 billion in real estate and business, Click the link below. You can learn about real estate. You can learn about franchise. Let's go. Yeah, it'd be interesting. See, like I say, when, when somebody jumps around franchise this and that, a lot of people, they just kind of follow the trends. In other words, they just sell whatever they can sell. Uh, so look, anyways, that always concerns me uh, when somebody jumps around from you know, subject to subject. Bro, is it me or is it getting just kind of hot in here? Yeah. Anyways, I'll tell you who this guy reminds me of. Reminds me of this guy. Running around his studio. <laughs> it's his workshop. Anyways, uh, so that's what's happening. Uh, you know, we could go back and we look at some of these others. We'll have to go back and revisit uh, Pace and some of these other things. Uh, but, uh, hey, yeah, thanks. Yeah, the channel's growing. Thank you. Appreciate that, Jim and I. Uh, anyways, uh, anybody got any special requests here or anybody got a real estate? Uh, thing the topic they want to discuss uh i'm ready to call it a day here i think uh, i'll see you guys in the class tomorrow otherwise and uh yeah uh, anyway anybody know uh, look kevin chose said he's made uh, five thousand uh he said he made part of ninety thousand but for whatever reason he's supposedly on track to making five six hundred thousand uh nobody seems to know people speculate a lot of people uh, are sure that he's made that much uh but uh i i haven't seen anything it would, uh, you know what I mean? It, it shouldn't be vague. You know what I mean? You, you shouldn't be going, hey, did, did he make it or not? I don't understand. He said he made it, but then he said he's on track to make that. And then, you know, and, and it shouldn't be that gray. It just shouldn't be that gray. Uh, Zach, Zach Ginn, Zach Ginn. Jake, I, I can take a look at him. Uh, I don't know who he is is i don't know who he is you know and i'm not look i'll, I'll look at anybody it doesn't matter but uh oh you mean right now oh right now oh gosh i don't know zach again not tonight but at some point uh do you buy all your deals on market loop net 
Yeah, I mean, I, I don't buy everything exclusively from any one place. So that was one of the questions somebody just asked. Uh, do I buy my properties strictly uh, or, or, you know, from... I mean, I, I, lose, I use all the uh, available options that are out there. But I'll give you an idea, though. So look, let's just, that's a good question. So I'm going to show you... I'll show you a place that I actually... I, I bought off a loop net right here. Um, let me show you this real quick. So... This is a property I still own. Uh, and, you know, this is a cool property. This is, I love this kind of property. I have, I have quite a bit of retail. So this is a retail building. You can see there's apartments uh, and duplexes and, you know, around, you know, it's got a, you know, this is the beauty of, of a retail center like this is, is all the shops around it, all the, all the, you know, this center could have exactly, if you guys can see this behind me. So look, here's my center here. It's got a vape shop. I got a little vape shop over here. It's got a karate school. I've got a couple of loan, you know, whatever loan companies. Uh, there's a veterinarian here. There's a, a, a palateria, a Mexican popsicle shop. It's quite cool. Uh, and then, uh, which uh, I tell you, they know how to make ice cream. Pretty great. Uh, and then uh, I, you know, I and I got a new uh, got a new uh, massage tenant in there. Uh, uh, you know, so in, in a massage parlor, tattoo parlor, vape shop. Uh, bar, not, not, I don't have a bar in this one, but that's usually what I have in these type of things. Uh, but this was one that I got on LoopNet, okay? And and I got a great deal. I got a really, really great deal. I've, I've made a few really good deals. I, a lot of people think that everything that goes on the MLS or goes out there is is uh, is going to be taken or it's going to be, and, and believe me, a lot of that stuff is. A lot of agents will tell me, hey, what are you looking for? And I'll say, well, if it's on LoopNet, I already know about it. You don't need to show it to me. But if you bring me something that I don't know about, certainly uh, I will consider it. Uh, so, yeah, uh, see, I only ask because everyone thinks buying off of LoopNet, etc., is not good buying. Uh, buying off market is all the rage these days. Listen, buying off market has always been the rage. Uh, it's always been the best, but it, it, it's not, it's not, I, I would say, uh, I, I mean, I'll just show you. Let me jump into the air here. Let me see if I can do this. Uh, so look in this, in, in this area and I'll see if I can see my other properties. So yeah, look, this is all those blue dots out there. Every one of those, those are properties that I personally uh, own or, or have owned at one time or another. And, you know, I can tell you, uh, just because it's on market and everybody knows about it doesn't mean you can't, uh, get a killer deal. I mean, I, I, I look, I'll show you a property. I made a million and a half dollars on a million and a half. Let me see where I can find this thing. Yeah, here it is. Uh, so look, this is, Okay, and I I got I don't want to lie. I, okay, I paid two hundred and twenty five thousand dollars for this building, and it was it was on market. Uh, it was, but it was poorly. I would say it was poorly marketed, to be quite honest, because uh, I bought this for about thirty percent of what everybody else paid for these other buildings. And uh, but I I bought this building for two hundred and twenty five thousand. I held it for. Uh, um, somewhere between 10 and 15 years. I can't remember exactly. I, I can look it up. But uh, anyways, this is a great little warehouse. has a loading dock here. It's also got offices. It's what we call a flex space. Technically, this is two buildings. If you can see, this used to be a hallway. They connected these two buildings at some point. But these are the kinds of specifics that you get when, when, when I talk to you. I, and it's because I, I'm a businessman. Yeah, listen, bullshitters talk around this subject. Businessmen get right to the damn point. Uh, and that's probably the number one, you know, uh, people say about my book. If you don't have my book, get my book. Wake up and smell the real estate. Uh, they say no fluff. Tom just gets straight to the point. Uh, I'm incapable of the fluff. I just, it's just, I'm not trying to uh, sugarcoat a turd. You know what I mean? So I can get to the point. People that talk around and are vague and ambiguous, it's like sugarcoating a turd. It really is. Uh, so what'd you say? Ah, vape shop and karate, uh, school of keep the nose down. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, I hadn't thought about that, Richard. Uh, glad you're in here. Anything that you regret flipping that you wish you held Tom? No. 
uh, and, and that's just the truth. There's, I, I can tell you, so look, I'll give you an example. And that's a good question, by the way. And everybody watching here, stick around for this because this is important. He's saying, do I have any regrets ever selling something? Listen, everything that I have sold is usually worth more than, you know, later it should be worth more than what I sold it for. Uh, there's no regrets with that. Uh, you know, I can, uh, listen, I bought property that, that was in the path of progress. I knew it was, I held on to it. Uh, you know, in other words, one was for an overpass. I could see something coming. Uh, but uh, this property here, the, the, I, the, the reason I sold this property uh, was to buy the one I just showed you. And, and that one, you know, I bought significantly under market. And that's the thing. You got to consider your money a tool. You know, when you use your money like a tool and, you know, uh, you know, it's how I bought apartment buildings, you know, a couple of miles from this property. I bought those three apartment buildings, you know, about 50,000 square feet of apartments or maybe a little more. Uh, and then look out from there in the horizon. All these properties I, you know, I, I bought, uh, and many still own, um, uh, yeah, houses, you know, I, I still own some of these houses, but you can see houses dotted around the neighborhood. Uh, this is a nice thoroughfare. There's a restaurant there that I bought and sold down here. If you want to see that, I'll show you a restaurant. Uh, you know, this little restaurant that I bought, uh, you know, you know, it's just real estate's fun. You know, it really is fun. And, uh, and hey, by the way, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. I always forget. I'm definitely not the slickest YouTuber ever. But uh, please hit subscribe uh, and encourage people to do so as well, please. It would help the channel. Ch channel's actually doing quite well. Uh, so I'm grateful for that. But but look at this. This is what you'll, you'll learn about me is that look, I buy, look at, I bought this building, this, this, this restaurant. I bought this vacant lot. I bought this house next to the vacant lot. I bought this house. I bought this house. They're all in a row. You know, I mean, this is, I would say you can't make this stuff up, but people do make stuff up like this, but this isn't made up. Uh, yeah. Every one of these houses, and I'll, I'll take you down just to look real quick. Uh, it is, uh, you know, that's why I say people are running around the country, you know, you got a transaction coordinator so you can buy something in Mississippi or Florida or Texas or Houston. When you live, it doesn't make sense. Everything is near you. You don't need to, you, you don't need to, to run all over the place. Uh, anyways, this great little restaurant here. Uh, I had a lot of fun with this place. Uh, and I, I bought it for 720,000, sold it for 930,000. I, I don't want to stay off, uh, get, get too stray away. Uh, you know, it's funny, you know, people watch YouTube, uh, not just for education, but mostly for entertainment. And, uh, uh, but, you know, there's a lot to be learned out there. And, you know, there's just, there's so many kinds of properties. I've got industrial buildings here. I've got, you know, commercial office, it, 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 but it's all around me. People say, well, well, should I buy land or should I buy, listen, you got to keep your options open and you just want to buy what you can make money on. You know, it takes a little time. You got to invest a little bit of time thinking about it, looking at stuff. Uh, I, I, you can't, it's not like you can hire somebody to do the thinking. Yeah, maybe you can go get a partner, but uh, you know, if, if, uh, you know, I, I personally I don't like partners because I don't like giving up 50% of my profit, uh, which is what happens in most partnerships, right? Uh and I've had very few partners in my lifetime. Uh, you know, I have one partner, he, he'd passed away, and now his, his kids that are almost my age are my partners. And uh, he was a great guy. Uh, and the reason he became my partner is, uh, as I was trying to talk him out of his property for years, and he said, you know what, Tom? He goes, I'm not going to sell you my property. He goes, but if you ever need a partner, he goes, I'll partner with you. And then uh, one opportunity came up, called me and said, hey, man, you want to be the partner? Cut a check, send it here. And he did. He didn't even ask for a receipt of deposit. He didn't ask for anything. He totally trusted me. And uh, and I can be trusted. And so, uh, but we, we partners for, I don't know, until he died, over 20 years. Now his kids are my partners. So anyways, uh, a person wrote, uh, is, let's see. What did you write? Uh, in Ben Mala's most recent podcast, he talks more details about how he is getting smoked on interest rates, yeah. Yeah, I appreciate Ben's honesty. Because uh, that, I mean, I, I feel bad for Ben. I mean, in, in all honesty, uh, uh, Ben should have been in my class. Because you know what he would have heard? He would have heard me tell him to refi. 
uh, get a fixed rate. Uh, and, you know, and I like Ben and, and Ben's richer than me, started later than me. And, uh, but, but, you know, he started out with some advantages that some of us don't have. He, he had a partner with big money, but he earned every bit of it because he, you know, he busted his ass, but he, you know, he had a good opportunity, but not everybody has a big, you know, m you know, mega millionaire partner behind them. And, uh, but if, if you've got Ben's talent, then, you know, you can do something with that. And, uh, Ben's a smart guy. I like him a lot. Um, but, uh, but he, he didn't respect the interest rates. And I, I just think that he started later than I did. So, he, you know, when I started, my first deals were all 10% interest. You know, everything was 10% interest all the way through the uh, 90s. From, I'm sorry, all the way from 1981 to 1990, just about everything was 10% interest. I, I, my first bank loan was nine and a quarter percent. I, I, in fact, I'll, you know, okay, so check this out too. We talk about barbells, right? Uh, I, I talk about barbells being, you know, you buy property uh, around your home and you buy property around your business. It'll end up looking like a barbell at some point. You know, mine's kind of getting more spread out all the time and I, I've got properties quite far away. Uh, but you can even have a, a multi-state barbell, you know, like, uh, like I over here in California. Where's my California? Yeah, here we go. Uh, so this is actually, so look at this. These are properties uh, I bought, you know, this is back in the 80s and 90s. I don't own any of these properties now. But but I, I want you to see this is a, a, the kind of history and this is the kind of stuff that you should look for in a, in a mentor or somebody. You look for experience. You want to see that people have actually done things, made money. Um, you know, I'll, I'll show you this is kind of a kick. I like showing this. This is my house I bought when I was 25. Uh, so this is like 1987. I bought this house, had a big kidney-shaped pool, cypress trees all around it, uh, beautiful property. Uh, you know, it's funny. People uh, that didn't know me uh, thought, you know, that I must have, you know, a big, big money guy behind me because I was doing so well. Uh, but the fact is, is I was just doing well. And you can too, you can too. But I mean, uh, it, it's it's just it's so important now to have somebody that's got your back that you can call up and say, hey, what do you think? Should I do this or should I not? And listen, there's a lot of people that promise that kind of backup. But a lot of times all that the, 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 that person is doing is calling somebody that's a student of somebody else that doesn't know enough, hasn't been around long enough. And believe me, students advising students, that's a big no-no. I mean, it's just, it's just, and believe me, I'm not talking about my students. My students are quite smart. But, but I'm saying, when you have students that have made hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars, like my students have, then certainly you could, you, they have stuff to share. They're smart. Uh, but until somebody has is, is proved out their, their capacity to make money, you know, where they've made a deal and they've made $100,000, you know, doing something, then, uh, then that, that goes a long way. Uh, but... Uh, uh, but anyway, so uh, anyways, I, I get a kick out of this. Uh, I remember, I'll tell you another story. Uh, this guy came to my door and opened the door, and I'm 25, and I looked pretty young uh, for my age when I was 25 especially. Uh, and the guy says, "Is your are your parents home? <laughs> he asked me if my parents were home. I own the property. And I laugh, and I go, uh, no. <laughs> I, go, I go, but I own the home. And he goes, oh, and he, he just kind of looked turned red. And he says, yeah, he goes, well, he goes, next door, he goes, he goes, I went to the door next door and there was a guy about your age answered. And I asked him, I said, I asked him, you know, a question. He says, oh, let me get my parents. <laughs> and so, uh, and I had a guy next door that actually lived with his parents. It was probably my age. So it, it was kind of funny. Uh, let's see. Uh, I'm happy to learn in tough times so I don't get blindsided by tough time. Yeah, I listen, I mean, I, I was born in tough times with high interest rates. I just didn't know it. Uh, and that's, and nobody should even really worry about it. Interest rates are 10% right now or whatever. It doesn't matter. As long as you know the rules to the game, you can make money. I tell anybody, you know, like if you're going to jump in the ring and fight somebody, uh, you know, look, I'm in jujitsu. I love jujitsu. Uh, you know, and when we go in, we know that we, we tap, we can lose, right? In other words, you, you tap when, ah, ah, that's like saying uncle or give. You tap, you're done. And, you're done. They let you go, you know, and they, they beat you. Uh, so you know the rules. Now, you get in a fight with somebody that doesn't like you uh, or, you know, a real scuffle on the street. 
there's no tapping out, right? So you know what the rules are now. The rules are on the mat when you're wrestling with somebody practice, you know, maybe you're not going to take an eye out or you're maybe you're not going to, you know, hit below the belt. Uh, if you're in a, in a, you know, if you're wrestling in, in a situation like that, you know, at, at, your, at your gym or your dojo or whatever you have you. But if it's somebody jumping you on the street, you're going to use everything that you know, but you're going to add in a lot of other dirty stuff uh, because you, those are the rules. You know, you're, you're now in a no rules area. So that that's the thing. So don't be afraid of high interest rates. Uh, certainly you should be concerned if you are in a, a, a you know, if you're in a, a loan where you're in, your rates are graduating up, uh, you know, as the Fed raises things. That, that's very precarious and not a great place to be in. And I'm sorry for you, the folks that are in that situation. Uh, I am hearing reports of people that are dropping projects and dropping, you know, they're, they're going out of business. Uh, the properties that are no longer uh, sustaining themselves because the interest rate went up. Uh, and, and that's happening and that's happening across the country. Uh, but you know, and that's where be, having a mentor is, is good. All my students know, I, I said, man, if you're going to get rid of it, sell it, you know, at certain times, or, uh, if you're going to keep it, get a fixed rate. If you don't have one uh, or everything that they bought when they were buying, I said, get it fixed, get it fixed. Uh, it, because it was the right thing to do at the right time. You know, and I, I dealt with floating rates for many, many, many years. You know, uh, since in 2009, the rates dropped significantly on one loan alone. Uh, it, that saved me $90,000 a year because I had a variable rate. My rate went from five and a half to two and a half, like in six months. And that was the Fed taking drastic actions. So, hey, anyways, uh, everybody watching again, please uh, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. Uh, be sure to uh, check out uh, Flip Anything USA, uh, and you know it's my page. Uh, you can go here and fill out the uh, mentoring survey. Urge you to do that. Uh, likewise, you can see there's also uh, uh, over here. You can you can get links to my book. Urge you to get my book, but also the webinar. You know I do the webinar every Thursday, 7 p.m. Uh, and you know I, I it doesn't matter if there's a lot of people or a few people. I talk, you know, I enjoy hearing people's stories and, 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 uh, and you know, helping them, you know, get, get to where they want to be. And, and believe me, you know, th th this, is, this is a wonderful life that you see right here, you know. Uh, th this is a wonderful life. I'm just telling you. It, you can see this major thoroughfare right here. You know, this is one I drive a lot. I drive by the properties that, I've, that I own and that I have owned. You know, uh, I, I get out and I pick up my parking lot. Uh, you know, or if I use the bathroom, I leave the bathrooms of the, of the restaurants or the bars, or the you know, anywhere that I go the, of a building that I own, I, I leave it cleaner than when I find it. In fact, I'm telling you, I'm guilty. I mean, I, I pick up strangers' parking lots. As I'm walking in the door, if I, if I know I'm going to go into a restroom or I'm going to go into a place, and I'm always going to wash my hands anywhere I go inside. So I pick up trash on the way in. I'll throw it in the trash can. Uh, and when I go in and use that bathroom, or, you know, their bathroom to wash my hands, I'll pick up the trash on the floor. I'll wipe the counter down. It's not my place. If they, you know, spray on the, you know, I leave the bathrooms cleaner than when I found them. And it, it, because that's what I do automatically when I go into my own properties. Now, the exception to that is, is when I'm leaving a property, I won't touch a piece of trash or garbage before I get in my car. Because that's how I like to think my steering wheel is clean. <laughs> and it will be clean when I get in the car. Uh, yeah, hey, Richard, I'm glad you're enjoying the show. Yeah, I look, I, I definitely am not uh, the, the slickest operator, but I, I promise you, I always tell you the truth. Uh, and, uh, you know, th this is, this is, uh, this is really, uh, a, a real estate can be wonderful. You can, you can do all you have to do is just when you make a purchase, it's got to be a good deal. It's got to be a great deal. Even even if you're not as active, you know, I was a, like a compulsive investor. I still am. You know, I'm very, very, uh, you know, just, you know, I buy a lot. And I've, I always have. And I have to control myself sometimes. Uh, but I, I bet the, 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 the discipline that I have, and that's what I try to pound into everybody's head that's in my classes, uh, you know, easy to do, hard to undo. You don't want to make a bad deal because it's very, very difficult to undo a bad deal. In fact, I'll show you a property. God, you know, I, I don't even have this one marked, but I'm going to show you in a roundabout way. I'll show you a property that I lost. Um, God, what did I lose? I lost, uh, I lost about 75,000. Uh, I have to go to Little Rock, 
California. So you can tell, you can see I'd already bought a lot of property in this area. And over in this area, by the way, I only have like five or six marked here, but for every one of those, I bought five properties. So I bought about 60 lots here. I bought about 20 uh, by myself. Uh, and then I started making a lot of deals and I took a, a partner and I bought like another roughly 40 more. Um, but out in this area, uh, you know, I'm going to show you the only property I, I, I lost money on. And it's not this one. I actually, I made $350,000 on this. This is 70 acres out in there, but not far from there. Not far from there is a place called Little Rock right here. Yeah, right here in Little Rock. And I can't tell you exactly where it is because it's been a long time but it but it was out here each of these squares i think are roughly like 160 acres uh well i bought 80 acres so i bought basically uh wasn't a section what do you call that i can't even remember anymore i think 640 acres makes a section and then a portion of the section makes 160 acres a fourth of that uh but anyhow basically uh, i bought half of one of these squares uh it was 80 acres i put me and a buddy put each put fifty thousand dollars down and then the economy started going down and we're making payments on it and it was uh it was but things were going down the tubes uh and then i i had actually had sold out pretty much everything that i had owned in this area uh and then i went to a new state and uh started you know setting roots down there and and this is really a good thing because these these are the times we're heading into so on that property i was already sorry that i bought it shortly after the economy was going down the tubes people were stopped building builders were leaving town to go to other places to build uh you know and then this book here i'm going to show you this book this this book this is full of uh, notes, you know, uh, notes secured by trustee. And these are, you know, creative financing, whatever, you know, uh, owner financing, whatever. You know, th this is what I would just call it owner financing. But, uh, you know, uh, in my early 20s, in the 80s, and this is 1981 to 1990, you know, I had over $10,000 a month coming in. That's a lot of money back in 1980, you know, or 1988 or 1990, right in there. Well, about the time that that property was going south on me, which I was going to say is about 1989, I realized, ah, this thing ain't worth what I owe on it. So I called my buddy and I said, hey, man, if, if we're going to be honest with ourselves, we don't have any equity in this thing. Uh, we might as well just hand it back. And, and we, you can hand a property back, by the way, just so you know. Uh, you, you can do what's called a deed in lieu of foreclosure. I mean, if somebody's foreclosing on you, uh, it, yeah, I mean, and nobody was foreclosing on me. I was prompt with my payment. But it was just like, you know what, let's just give it back. And so we deeded the property back to the owner. Uh, it was an owner finance deal. Now, I called my friend. I says, look, I'm going to lose 50. You're going to lose 50. He goes, no, Tom. He goes, I'm going to lose a hundred. I go, what are you talking about? He goes, I sent in another 50,000. He paid an extra 50,000. I'm like, Oh God. So, so now, uh, he's got 50 and more in it than I do. And I go, it's still not worth the balance. Even if we subtract the 150 that we put in, it's still not worth it. And, uh, he's like, ah, and I said, well, and this is the problem with doing business sometimes with friends. I'm like, okay, I'll pay you, I'll give you $25,000, and uh, but not right now. I'll give it to you later. I said, so So we, we gave the property back, and then I, I worked out and, and, you know, paid off my buddy uh, through some trading and some money. And, he, he, again, because there's just no sense throwing good money after bad. And that's that's one of the things that can get you when you're, when you're wealthy is that you don't want to take no for an answer and you just keep throwing money after something because you have the money. Well, anyways, there can be a, a double-edged sword when that happens. Uh, Richard says he's in Australia, I guess. No, holding in Australia half a million people moving to the uh, East Coast. I think it's five million. I can't tell which you're right in there. It's not money, I guess. East Coast from the overseas each year. Uh, took a new fixed rate. Oh, good, glad, good for you, Richard. Glad you did. 
Yeah, you know, th th these are the things. And, and let me give you an example just so you see this. Uh, uh, this is, look at this airport. This was a, at one time was on track to be like an international airport. You know, this is 60 miles outside of uh, L.A., you know, about 90 minutes actually from LAX. Uh, and so people, and this, you got to remember the scammers that are out there, all kinds of scammers. Uh, so they hype this airport up is like, you know, it's coming, it's going to be fantastic. And, and then they sell all, I mean, look how much properties out here. Look at all this wasteland, you know, that nobody's on. And uh, so it's kind of like Florida swamp property. You hear about people, you know, selling property that's in the swamps of Florida. Well, this desert area is kind of like the swamp. Uh, in fact, you got to watch out for stuff like this too, by the way. Uh, when you see, uh, you don't want a piece of property in the middle of a wash like this, by the way. Uh and, you know, it's like, a, it's like a dry wash, but when things are wet, you can see it. It's really interesting from the sky. You can identify the flood channels, you know, from where they are. And uh, anyways, so, I, so I'm just going to say for you guys that are new uh, in real estate and you want to make money in real estate, uh, don't invest with anybody else. I, I just don't advise it. Uh, get some skills. I, I always tell everybody, first of all, it's good to have a skill, a money engine. You know, my money engine used to be my hands. You know, I was a good, capable carpenter uh, and good, you know, decent salesman, talk people into let me have the job. And, and so it's good to develop a skill, whatever it is. I don't care if you're a bartender or whatever. Have a skill that, that pays enough that you can make a decent living. Uh, and if you can make it part-time and you own your, con you know, control your hours, that's a really advantageous place to be in because it, it frees you up, A, to get educated and learning about, how to make money from people like me and but then when you're ready to pull the trigger and do something you're prepared in other words when i buy a piece of property it, it, it's not like oh should i or shouldn't i oh i hope this is a hope i'm doing you know if, if you feel like ah, i hope i do you know, then you're then you're doing the wrong thing if you're afraid that what you're doing might be the wrong thing then it's probably the wrong thing you want to you want to deal from a position of confidence where you know it's like yeah there's no question i want this deal to close because i'm going to make you know i know that this is worth 100 i'm buying it for 50 i th there's no question i'm not praying i'm not hoping i'm not wishing i'm like buying it you know what i mean now if you're going to invest with somebody and this is a good rule to follow by the way and it's one that i actually really follow so like so, so take Chris Crone, for instance. Uh, you know, he's looking for people to invest with him. Fine. But the only, when I've taken a partner, uh, and the one that I probably made the most money for, made millions of dollars, and I made, of course, you know, twice as much as him. Because he only, was, he only invested one-third of the money. I invested two-thirds. He invested one-third. Now, I'm not saying that's a perfect way to do it, but... If you're going to loan somebody money or if you're going to invest with somebody, wouldn't you like to know that they have more to lose than you do? If you're putting up all the money and it's only 25%, you have all the money to lose. They just can walk away because they don't have any sweat in the game. That's what you got to be afraid, you know, be very, very careful of. You want somebody to have sweat in the game. So when you invest, or not you, but when somebody has invested with me, I own two thirds of the project. In other words, I have the most to lose. And that makes people feel pretty good about, uh, yeah, well, he's, uh, you know, in other words, they can, I, I can see if I was going to invest with somebody, I know that they, they're going to lose twice as much as my investment, then I might be willing to go, oh, you know what, you know, I, I'll take a little bit of a chance. In that situation, I would. Uh, but uh, if they got nothing to lose and, and I have the cash in and they have nothing to lose, they can walk away, then forget it. I would never go into an investment like that. And I, I, I would urge you to uh, consider the same thought process. Uh, yep, always, let's see, uh, always hitting that home. Yep, <laughs> it's, it's in the deal, that's right. He's talking about, I guess, what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, you make your money the day you purchase a property. Uh, let's see, yeah, what do I think about Miami market? It doesn't matter, listen. Uh, unless an area is devastated, like, you know, like, you know, when 
when the, the president or current president got in, he canceled that huge pipeline. We had a pipeline, you know, coming down from Canada. Uh, and I think it was South Dakota. You know, the place was just prospering like crazy. Then all of a sudden, bam, government killed it. Devastated the area. It wouldn't matter if interest rates were 0%. That place was devastated. There has to be work. You know, I remember, uh, I think it was Flipman, uh, T- Ty, He's somebody I talked to a long time ago, and he, he showed me a property, and I go, well, let me take a look at it. I looked at it, and it, just like I'm looking at these properties right here, he had a property that was like a pretty good deal, was like, or it looked like a good deal on the surface. It was like 140 grand for a little house. Everything else was 280 grand. Well, I looked deeper at it. Nearly every house in, on, the, on the page, on the entire page, was owned by the bank. Everybody had lost their home everybody in the picture had lost their home except for this one guy that wanted to sell his place for 140 well when the bank owns all that stuff they have the power to sell it for nothing they can sell it for you know 10 cents on the dollar so it, in other words you got to keep that in context what's the deal you know that's this is how people get screwed so badly when they invest you know they're living in an area where everything costs three four five hundred or a million dollars in their neighborhood and then they go oh i can get this great deal in idaho or uh, you know or, or you know or mississippi i can get a house bigger than this one for a hundred thousand yeah but guess what everything around there is like that so it's not a deal okay it's a boat anchor you got to be careful of that sort of thing so hey anyways uh, thanks a lot everybody for hanging out and uh, again uh, please hit that subscribe button hit that like button and uh, be sure to look at my other videos i got some fantastic stuff out there a lot of good life lessons learning lessons uh you get in my webinar you can get in my webinar uh, uh every thursday i have a webinar uh you can see that up there thursday 7 p.m uh, go to uh, flipanythingusa.com slash webinar sign up for that uh, also, say, you know, get the book, save me some time from telling you, because what I'm going to tell you, uh, if you want to get in the, you get, when you start to look at the mentorship survey, I tell you, go buy the book. You got to buy the book, read the book. And if you're still interested and everybody is, of course, then we'll have a conversation, but I, I'll talk to anybody for free. Uh, you know, cause I, you know, it's not about money. It's uh, my legacy is, is more about, I've already made the money. I got the legacy of making money that I've already got. But I don't want on my tombstone, this guy made a lot of money. I want this guy helped a lot of people to make money. And that's been the most rewarding thing is seeing guys that are my age and younger, guys, men 30, and there's women too. I uh, have a new one, Sarah, by the way. Thank you, Sarah, for joining. Uh, but, uh, you know, men and, men and women, you know, from 25 to, to 65 years old, you know, if, if I can help their life become a little easier through an investment they make, that is life changing, you know, make a hundred extra hundred grand. You know, that's a lot of money to make when you're 65, make an extra hundred grand. Uh, or, or when you're young, it's, it's a hell of a kick, you know, to get you somewhere else. But, you know, I've got students now that have made, you know, hundreds of thousands, you know, uh, tens of thousands and, and now millions. And, uh, it's a, it's a very cool thing. And I hope everybody's a part of it. Uh, Rob Johnson wrote, and I recognize that name from the webinar. Did you swoop in and start buying from the bank? Uh, no, but there, I can tell you there's, uh, there's a regret I have on one that I should have, could have bought. I could have bought 171 acres for 171000 and included a little house. That property is worth about $18 million right now. But I was in a position at that time, I bought other stuff that made a lot of money, don't get me wrong, but... Uh, that is the first time I, you know, I, I can look back and go, damn, I wish I'd have bought that, you know, because uh, that, 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 I mean, it, it, I could have made money on it immediately, even back then. But I was looking at the time, I was focusing on, uh, t- you know, putting this in, this cash that I had into stuff that would give me, uh, you know, a, a nice cash flow each month. This was land. I didn't want to buy land at the time. I was looking more for, you know, monthly income. But I wish I would have bought it in hindsight. Uh, because it's just so freaking valuable now. It's just incredibly valuable now. And for Mike, I think it's probably half covered with houses now too. So uh, again, hey, thanks for watching everybody. Uh, get the book and, uh, you know, uh, catch a webinar and we'll see y'all soon and I'll leave you with this. And listen, time is on a mission to eliminate all the snake oil and the fake gurus that fake y'all. Let will show you how to build an empire. Starting with nothing but a desire. All you really need is a good mentor.
mentor, not a used car, bullshit tour. With time, you'll learn to crush it. Investing like Warren Buffett. With real estate, you cannot procrastinate. Everyone who hesitates is left at the starting gate. Hey, yo, so don't delay and join today. The mentorship and flip anything you will say, go.